Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, I received an email from a person asking me if I could demonstrate my workflow for a landscape image in DxO Photolab 4. They told me that they downloaded the fully working free trial of Photolab 4, but they were a bit confused because Photolab 4 has a lot of different controls and tools that they just weren't familiar with coming over from Lightroom. So if you're used to an application like Lightroom or maybe even Luminar or On One Photo Raw, um, Photolab 4 might be a bit of a shock because there's a lot of different controls, a lot of similar controls, but some things it does a little bit differently. So I chose to do this image. I chose this image because I think it's a difficult image to process. The scene had a lot of dynamic range, some very bright areas, some very dark areas. And it's been my experience that this type of image is the most difficult to post process. Also, I chose this image because it will give us an opportunity to use a couple local adjustment tools, a graduated filter and a brush. So I could demonstrate that as well. Now in the description below this video, I'll have um, a list of all the equipment I use to capture this scene. Also, I have links to DxO's website for Photolab 4. As I mentioned, they have a fully working free trial. I also have a discount code. If you choose to purchase it, use the discount code, you could save a few dollars. So, what I typically like to do when I'm using DxO Photolab 4 is go to tone first. And there's a lot of different ways you could go about doing that because there's a lot of different like tools in here that control tone or light. One is called smart lighting, and usually I won't do anything here. By default, it's going to be on, and I'll just leave it on. I won't do anything. But what I found when I have a scene like this that has a lot of dynamic range, I like to relight it or re-expose it with the smart lighting. And the way I go to about doing it, though, is very subtle. It doesn't do a lot to the image. What I'll do is I'll go to spot weighted, and as soon as I click on that, it's going to look for a face in the image. And because there isn't one, it's going to tell me no faces are detected. Because typically, if you take an image of a person, you want to expose for their face. And this tool will help you do that. But this is a landscape shot with no person in it. What I want to do is really this area, this cliff out here, see how dark it is? I want it to kind of relight the scene so, so nothing, no shadows are crushed. So what I'll do is I'll get the tool, I'll just click on it, and you'll see that the tool will be active. And what I need to do is just draw a box, a square or rectangle, over the area I want it to look at to relight or re-expose the scene. So I'm just going to go over this darker area right here, and I'm just going to draw this rectangle. And as soon as I let go, you'll see it'll open up those shadows just slightly. And what I found is that ever so slight amount really gives me a better base to work off. So when I start to actually process the tone in a more conventional way, it will just do a better job. So I like that. You could draw more than one box and have it look at different areas, but that single box was fine. I'm gonna go down here in the lower right-hand corner and click on Close. So I'm done with DxO Smart Lighting. Next, I'll go to Selective Tone. Now, this has sliders in it that you may be more familiar with, you know, highlights, mid-tone, shadows, and blacks. Usually, I just go to the slider that I think, as I look at the image, it needs the most work. Well, the the shadows are still pretty dark, so I'll just jump right to that and open up the shadows. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Kind of a typical landscape adjustment. I'll bring in the highlights a little bit. I'll open up the midtones, maybe just a touch, just a touch, and then we'll uh, bring back a little contrast by bringing black slider down, just a little bit. So I really didn't move those sliders too much. Uh, just maybe highlights quite a bit. So there. Now, I'm going to go to DxO Clearview Plus. Um, I typically won't use this because it tends to make the image look very HDR-like, and I don't like that look. But I will try it just to see what it does. What it will do is it's going to increase contrast and increase saturation. You'll see. I'll turn it on. And you'll see that it's very HDR-like. Usually, I don't like that. But what I'll do now is I'll just take intensity down. And sometimes this one control, like even bringing it down to like seven, it increased the contrast and it added enough saturation where it just saved me those steps where I don't have to go to the color panel and go to saturation and add more saturation or go to the HSL panel and do things there. 
I think that the, it took care of the saturation and took care of a little bit of the contrast. So in this case, having it at eight, I think is fine. So I'll close that down. And then next is contrast. Now I mentioned it took care of most of the contrast, but I'll add a little more. All right. And this micro contrast, this one you do have to be careful with. If you go up too high, you'll get it to an HDR look again. So I just want to be careful with that. And I'm just going to add a touch contrast. Again, what I'm doing here when I add contrast is I don't want to crush the blacks again because that's what I'm in danger of doing with these cliffs over here. So I want to be very careful that I'm not just crushing the blacks when I turn contrast up. Also, I don't want to blow out the highlights when I do that either, because as you do that, it makes the brighter parts brighter and the darkest parts, darker parts darker. So you want to be careful you don't crush the shadows or blow out the highlights. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to use tone curve on this image. Um, all right, now when I was here this day, the light was relatively cool. Uh, so it was kind of a bluish light because of the water and the sky but this is too blue. So we're going to jump over to the color panel and I'm going to go to white balance and I'm just going to go to the drop down. I usually do this first and I'll try cloudy. Cloudy will warm it up and you can see it made the white clouds a little more yellowish. Um, let's go to shade. That will do, do it even more. And you can see that's considerably stronger. I like that look on the beach and the water, but I think the clouds are a little bit too overbearing. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to pull the temperature down just a little bit so I regain some of the white of the cloud. And I think that looks pretty good right there. All right, I'm really almost done, but uh, there's really a big swath of this image that is still kind of boring, and that is the water. Uh, the water is really tonally pretty equal. There's not a lot of you know interest there. So I want to do something with the water. So I'm going to use a local adjustment for that. One thing I should say, this was shot at ISO 100. There really isn't much noise. So if I move over uh, to the detail tab, just the HQ um, noise reduction, which by default is on, is fine. So I don't have to use prime or deep prime on this image. But if, of course, I had an image that was shot at higher ISO, that's probably what I would do next. I would come in here and get rid of the noise uh, now. But I'll leave that alone right now, that's fine. But we're gonna go to local adjustments right here. So what we need to do now is add a graduated filter to this. So just opening the panel doesn't give you a local adjustment. You either have to click right here where it says tool or click up here. So I'll click there. Now we have a number of different local adjustment tools we could use. I wanna use the graduated filter. So what we'll do is we'll right click on the image and then you'll see right here is the graduated filter. Now you can see I have this plus sign. Now I don't want to apply the graduated filter the more common way, that is you click and drag down because that would affect the sky. I want it to affect the water. So I'm gonna click around where the, the horizon is and I'm going to push up on the mouse. So I'm adding that, you can see by the, um, by the mask, I'm adding this graduated filter to the water. And what we're going to do here is I just, I don't even want a transition area. I want it to be like just right there on the water. So I'm just affecting the water. Now you see when I do that, we have some controls here. We have three different panels. We have light, color, and detail. And I'm going to start out with light. And what I want to do is I want to add more contrast to the water. So I'll go right to contrast. And you can see as soon as I click down, it gets rid of the mass. So we could see what we're doing. All right. So I added contrast, but... Overall, uh, it's still, I think, a little bit too dark. So what I want to do is I'm not going to go to exposure. Um, I just want to open up shadows because I want to keep those brighter parts brighter but not make them brighter than they are now. And um, exposure would do that. It would make the brighter parts brighter. I don't want to do that. And we'll bring maybe blacks down a little bit. So I'm kind of adding a little more contrast that way. Um, what we'll do is I'm a little bit crooked. See if I could straighten it out a little bit better. There we go. When I click with my mouse button, you see how it went crooked on me? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, that's good enough. And uh, let's see, do we want to mess with micro contrast? See what that does? Maybe a little bit. 
All right, now I could do a before after. I could click on this eyeball here and that will turn off every local adjustment. I only have the one. If I had more than one local adjustment, I could turn them off individually by clicking on their individual eyeballs. So I'll click there. There's before the graduated filter and there's after the graduated filter. You could see it just kicked in. So it just added a little bit more tonal variation. Uh, the undulations of the waves are a little brighter in the lower parts and a little darker in the higher parts. So I think it added that much more interest. Here, we'll do it again. There's before, once it kicks out, there we go. And there's after, you'll see it kick in right now. So I think that's pretty good. Now I want to add another local adjustment, a brush. I wanna do something uh, with these hills in the background. And still, I am going to obsess slightly over this. This, uh, graduate a filter here to try to get it to better conform to where I want it to conform. All right, that's good. All right, uh, the hills in the background, uh, still a little dark and kind of drab. So I wanna add a brush. I wanna brush on those and affect those a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a new mask. Click right here, new mask. Now right click again on the image because we're in the graduated filter mode still and we're gonna get a brush this time. And you can see when I do that, now we have a brush tool and I'll brush over on these hills. And when I do that, you can see over here now we had added a brush. So what I'm gonna do is just add brush on the hills and the trees up in there. Um, on the lower left hand side, you can see that there's some brush attributes. It has the size at 60 and then it has feather flow and opacity all at 100 that those settings are 100 are good enough for this. I'm not doing anything too fancy here. All right, so we'll just try to quickly, I'm trying to avoid the sky though. I don't want it to hit the sky. If I wasn't trying to talk in my mic, which the mic is kind of to my right, and I'm kind of looking to the left, I would probably do a much better job, but we'll see what we could do. All right, now we're not gonna do anything too dramatic here. Uh, what I wanna do is we're gonna go right to the color uh, here, uh, the color tab. And you can see if we just hover over these controls, it tells you what they do. There's vibrancy, there's saturation, there's temperature, there's tint, and that last one is hue. We're not gonna change the color of anything, but we're gonna go to saturation and push saturation up, all right? We'll jump back over to that light tab, and I think what I wanna do is go to shadows and just bring those shadows up just a little bit. See how it's, if I go too far, you'll see brush strokes. See, I don't want it to do that. I just wanna just make it a little more prominent. So I, I did kind of selective saturation just here because the sky is pretty blue, the water's pretty colorful. I don't want to overdo it. So, I, but, I, but I'll go back here. I did overdo it a little bit though. It's looking a little bit too yellow and green in there. So I'll pull that down. But there, I took care of that and I'm done with local adjustments. So what we'll do when we're done, we'll just click close over in the lower right hand corner. So we're done with local adjustments. Now let's see a before after. There's two different ways you could do before after, uh, keyboard shortcut ways. Uh, you could just compare before after, holding the D key on your keyboard. There's before, let go of the D key, there's after. The other way is you could use a split screen view. Hit C on your keyboard and you have a split screen and there's before and there's after. Get rid of that split screen, hit C again. Now, of course, those are available right at the top as well. If you prefer, you could click and hold on compare there or turn on the split screen view right there and do it that way and then click on it again if you'd like. So I think I kind of like it uh, the way it is. Uh, so I'm pretty much done. I'm just gonna go back, jump back over to the light panel and I'm going to go to the vignetting, which was automatically on because it removed the vignetting that any vignetting it's sensed on the outside. I wanna bring that back. I wanna bring back some of that vignetting. I just want the, the, the outside to, a little bit darker so it kind of pushes everyone's attention more towards the middle. Now, you'll notice I really didn't sharpen. Um, in my opinion, many people, particularly uh, photographers that are just beginning, when they're using shooting landscape image, they tend to over sharpen their images. And typically, the way the cameras are so resolute nowadays, you don't have to do a lot of sharpening. Uh, of course, if you're shooting a wildlife image or maybe a macro image of a flower with delicate petal petals and there's the little hairs are coming off the, the, the uh, stem of the you know, plant or whatever, of course you're gonna sharpen that. 
But in this case here, I don't think I need to. I think it's fine the way it is. Um, there's a lot of detail everywhere. Again, I'll give you a before after. There's before and there's after. So that's one way you could go about processing an image in uh, that is a landscape image in PhotoLab 4. There's no right or wrong ways. You could get, uh, you know, all different ways. You could, you know, do use different tools. I, I used a handful of everything that's available here. So, um, you know, your best bet is download the fully working free trial and work with it. Get an idea what these things do. If you don't understand what something does, what you could do like focal length, if you don't understand, there's a little question mark there. If you click on that little question mark, it will tell you what that does. So it's, it's very uh, user friendly, even white balance. You see a little question mark there? Just click on it and it will tell you what, what to do and what it does. So it really will help you um, um, learn how to use these different controls that are in the software. I'd like to thank uh, that person, his name was Danny, that uh, emailed me asking me to do this video. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.